of February. It's February. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow's Groundhog Day. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> What's he going to see? Is he going to be able to break up through the ice to see anything? Well, um, it's sunny today. If it's sunny tomorrow, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get the dog out there to catch the groundhog. Hmm. Well, guys, this is a good time to start preparing some something, something of some kind for Valentine's Day. Girls Just can do it too. Think about it. Girls remember those things. Guys don't. <laughs> I'm gonna sing number eight hundred sixty-three. Our Father, by whose name. forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will be bursting with wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproof, for the Lord reproves him whom he loves, as a father, the son in whom he delights. I wonder if you noticed that there was a pattern starting here. The, uh, I mean, it started a little earlier, actually. Um, in chapter 1, there's the little bit of an introduction, the Proverbs of Solomon. And then at verse 8, Hear my son, your father's instruction. In chapter 2, My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments. And, and those two chapters, 1 and 2, talked about the value of wisdom and pursuing wisdom. Now chapter 3, my son, do not forget my teaching. Chapter 4, hear, O sons, a father's instruction. Uh, Chapter 6, my son, if you have put up security for your neighbor, 
Uh, chapter 7, my son, keep my words and treasure up my commandments. The, uh, this first, this opening several chapters of Proverbs, um, and it, it doesn't continue, it, about chapter 9 or 10, it, then it starts into a long list of Solomon's Proverbs. But these are, these are a father to a son. This is a, this is a family thing. And, and it's not just generic wisdom. But it's, hey kid, these are these are things you need to need to know, need to hold on to. So in chapter three, in the, this first section, um, don't forget my teaching. That's a kind of introductory statement. It's going to be good for you. That's what he said in the first two chapters. Don't let steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you, but bind them around your neck. Keep keep them close. Steadfast love is this, it's the same word that's translated sometimes mercy. Um, and and so the 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 man of God is to is to be is to have love and mercy and and faithfulness bound to him. He is to be humble. Trusting in the Lord, lean not on your own understanding. Uh, we we quote that a lot. And in fact, that's a common um, confirmation text. A lot of people get that from for a confirmation text. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He'll make straight your paths. But we skip this part. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. The, the person who is humble, who is trusting in the Lord, turns away from evil because they're not thinking that they know everything, but rather looking to the Lord for that wisdom. Honor the Lord with your wealth. Uh, don't despise the Lord's discipline. Each of those little sections in, in my Bible, the, in this ESV edition, has separated them out into sort of paragraphs. 9 and 10, 11 and 12. So the, so the father tells his son, presumably Solomon and uh, Rehoboam, <laughs> who turns out to be an idiot, or all his other sons, uh, because he has so many wives. Sometimes it's easier to know the right thing than to do it, isn't it? And this may be at a time in Solomon's life before he has gone so far astray. Uh, love and faithfulness. Trust and humility, um, a wise use of your of your wealth, uh, honoring the honoring God with your wealth, um, not despising God's discipline when when bad things happen, not to be upset, but rather to accept this as what's God doing in my life. The father and son aspect of this is real deliberate here it's really accidental in most of our lives I don't know if you can remember things that your dad or your mom took you aside and said Karen I want you to you always remember this that's hard isn't it they imparted wisdom to us our parents did but not in this, not in this digested, you know, form. Not in this, this kind of a. Here I'm handing this on to you. Maybe this is a good thing. I wonder if, if our children would listen more. If we were to write, to say, I've been thinking, and these are the six most important things I want you to know. You know where I've heard of that more commonly done still quite uncommon um, many people write a preamble to their will and and in their last will and testament say I've got various earthly things to dispose of but but the most important things I have to give you are these and and the last words we used to talk about a person's last words um, the words that you leave behind 
have an impact on the people that you leave after you. Solomon's words did not seem to have much of an impact on Rehoboam, but they did have an impact on all the people after Solomon. Uh, this wisdom is still there and it's still available to you and to us to be learned and to be tapped. I wonder if your wisdom is going to be available to anybody. I, I remember a few things, particularly because it was burned in to me uh, uh, because it was at the occasion of my mom's death just a couple of days, you know, our last, her birthday party, her 90th birthday party. Those last things that she said just really stuck. There are lots of other things that I sort of remember. Uh, mom would say this, or dad would say that. Uh, I, when we come up with some question, I know what mom would say about that. But particularly those last things, I'll see you in God's house. And she said, there's always, she was just reading a plaque on the wall. She said, there's always, always, always a reason to give thanks. Telling us, uh, hey, telling us, do not despise the Lord's discipline or be weary of his reproof. Um, it's okay when hard things happen. God is working with us. Um, what would you say? That's a good thing to think about today. Let's pray about it. Heavenly Father, in all humility, because we have no reason to be proud, you have given us some wisdom. You have taught us lessons because in our foolishness we have we have had to learn a hard way sometimes. You have disciplined us, reproved, reproved us. Heavenly Father, help us to, to recognize those things that we have learned from you. Help us to value them. And help us, Lord, teach us to teach them, to share them, to pass them along to those who may listen especially to us because... We have an important place in their life. Maybe they won't open Solomon's words. Lord, help us to choose wisely and well and to share solemnly and uh, faithfully. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace.